everybody george here the disney family man back again i know you're probably so sick and tired of seeing this camo shirt on me but yet here we are again <laughs> joining me uh again today is orange grove 55 and we're, this topic we're going to discuss um about an yet another cutback from the walt disney company with the parks um involvement with um uh walt disney world per se that Anytime someone traveling outside the state of Florida, you have an option to take Disney's uh, own transportation system from uh, Orlando International Airport to your resort hotel. And it's called Disney's Magical Express. And it's a shuttle bus that is actually within the Orlando International Airport and Disney takes care of your luggage for you. You get on the bus. Uh, they have Disney cartoons playing, they have Disney music playing, and it hypes you up and it, the, the, the Disney cast members, the bus drivers, they get you all rare and ready for your vacation. And it's like the creme de la creme to start your vacation, to pass on through. And more importantly, this was a free service. Now, I do know a lot of people are saying, well, they kind of sneak in those fees with your vacation package. <laughs> But if that's the case, you're still paying for it, but you're getting all those amenities. And Disney had just released that starting literally the second the year 2022 comes in, Disney's Magical Express will no longer be available for guests coming to Walt Disney World. And I was completely bummed because I've done many, many trips to Walt Disney World and I've used the Magical Express every single time. I love that experience. And to now, again, is Disney cutting off a little more than what they really need to just to save a buck? Or are they just doing this to saying, you know what, we have too much. Let's, let's just get rid of it. And I do know that you, uh, you're a Disneyland guy, not at Walt Disney World, but just your overall thoughts and opinions on the whole notion of these cutbacks. Are they really necessary well i mean i think to some degree they are necessary in the sense that like the company is really i think in in kind of a survival mode i mean i do believe that because anytime you have these resorts shut down like disneyland even though it's disneyland it's not florida it's the whole division is affected when you have your other resort you're in you know in 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 the US, the domestic parks, your other half completely shut down for over a year, it's gonna hurt even Florida because it's the whole division. So I do think that, yeah, I mean, some of these cuts are necessary, but I don't know. I think they should be a little smarter as to where they cut maybe, because it, I feel like from what you're explaining, I never, I never been on the Magical Express, but from what you're explaining to me and what I've seen, this kind of gets you, in the mindset it kind of hypes you up a little bit from the from the airport to the resort where you, they they play the disney cartoons they get you in the mood you, you kind of get that that taste of disney almost immediately off of your plane and i just feel like that's kind of an, an important aspect of your trip you know that that whole it, it, it that really whole, is. but yeah. if that is the case where disney and i i do understand to a point where they're trying to cut costs they're trying to save as much money as possible yeah, but would that hurt them in the long run? Because the more that they're cutting, that that's what draws people to Disney is the unique service that Disney gives that top notch A plus grade A meat service. <laughs> <That> <laughs> FDA approved, by the way. Yeah, that, that and that's what everyone craves. So they can fork out and put out all that money for that once in a lifetime, possibly once in a lifetime vacation. Because right. especially now, the way with the economy is today, people may not be so fortunate that they can go to Disney three or four times, you know, in every couple of years. They may just have that once in a lifetime vacation and they want to live it up. And if they're cutting all this, but the prices are going up, is Disney going to end up losing all those guests, those customers and then they're not going to get nothing back in return as far as financial goes. Yeah. Sometimes the, the little things matter, 
you know, and especially when it comes to Disney parks, like the little things matter. And Disney kind of struggles with this through the years. You know, we had the same, we had a similar issue in the nineties with Paul Pressler. He would start to cut and close attractions, you know, and, and he would skimp out on like maintenance and things like that. Oh yeah. We don't need, you know, that many custodial people, right? We can cut that a little bit or we can cut here or there. But when you do that, it, 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 it lessens your experience, you know, uh, eventually these little things add up, you know, and people might say like, well, it's just uh, the bus from the airport to the resort. Yeah. But when you, when you cut that and then you're going to cut Tron and you're going to delay this, and then you're going to cut that and you're going to delay that and you're going to delay this. Eventually all those little cuts add up, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it starts to affect your overall experience, you know, and it's sad to see. It really is. And I get it. I understand the position they're in right now with the pandemic. I just don't know. I just feel like there's, if there's other ways they could mitigate the loss other than completely gutting the experience, like, you know, I, I don't know. Me personally, I would say, and we were talking about this in our last segment for the, the state of where Tron and guardians of the galaxy is. And even the star Wars star cruiser, I say, put all that money out, finish them off, open Ratatouille, open Avengers campus. You know, when Disneyland opens everything that's practically done, open it up and then don't do no more projects for a while. Let that build up, you know, all that revenue, let the finances come back in. Then within time, start projects back up. But I think with this starting, stopping, starting, stopping, cutting this, delaying that, as you said, I I think it's going to hurt them in the long run. Yeah, I do too. Absolutely. I do too. And it's not that I'm trying to, to, you know, down anyone, but it also makes me second guess that the CEO of the Walt Disney company right now is Bob Chapek. And he was always known that even before the, the shutdown and the pandemic and everything, he was one that tried to cut costs and cut little things and wanting to even cut the entertainment. So it makes me wonder with him being CEO and especially with now with the pandemic and everything going on, the, the cuts that Disney is making, which ones are the necessary ones and which are the ones that he's just doing because he just wants to do it just to cut it. Yeah, it makes you wonder. And it also makes you wonder where Bob Iger is, because Bob Iger is still a big part of the company. He hasn't officially left yet. And I know Bob Iger, I mean, I know a lot of people don't like him. I know a lot of people criticize him for being too franchise focused. But if there's one thing that Bob Iger was when it came to the parks, it was not cheap. Exactly. Um, we saw a lot of good things under Bob Iger. We saw DCA uh, you know, 2.0. We saw Pandora, New Fantasyland. We saw a lot of great things and I'm wondering what he's thinking. If it is JPEG being cheap, why isn't he? I wonder why Iger's not stepping in and being like, Hey, Hey dude, <laughs> you can't cut this stuff because it, you know, you, we need to bring people in, you know? Yeah. It, it does make me wonder because Bob Iger was always one that, you know, if, if something wasn't working out, I mean, he did in the history of the Walt Disney company, the biggest acquisition deals ever. Yeah, with, with Pixar, with Lucasfilm, with Marvel, with Fox. I mean, it was he knows how to negotiate things. <laughs> and, and remember this. Remember this. We we here in California, we got the announcement in 2006, I believe, for a, a new DCA, a DCA 2.0. By 2008, I believe, or 2009, we hit a really big recession i think it was called the great recession around that time a huge economic downturn right right and we st- and bob Iger still pushed ahead though right we still got the because D- that was right in the middle of our dca renovation we still got world of color we still got one of street we still got cars line because bob Iger understood you have to put money in to get money out Exactly. You know, and I'm wondering is JPEG making, you know, this mistake where he can kind of, he feels like he can just kind of skimp out and he's going to make the same amount of money because you're not. Because even when JPEG was not CEO and he was just the, the chairman of the parks division, to me, 
he still, I feel that he wasn't, and I could be wrong that I just feel that he wasn't the right fit for the parks. He is good at what he was used to doing before becoming into parks. And that was the consumer products. When you're in right. consumer products, you know how to cut costs. You know what product. And um, there you go. Okay. You're good now. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, folks. I don't know what happened there. A little, little glitch, little, little glitch in the grid <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that uh, went, J- JPEG cut our uh, Wi-Fi. Tapped in, he, tapped, <laughs> he tapped in. So he knew we were talking about him. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, I just feel that with him knowing the consumer products that you know how to cut costs, you know how to, you know, what product is good, what product is bad, where to cut this, where to cut that. And sometimes, you know, when you get moved into something else, you take that talent and try to incorporate it into something else. And for me, I really don't think that works well with the parks. You can't, Yeah, it's not going to work that way. And that's just my opinion. I don't, you know, it may, it may not, but that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. You got, you got to put money in to get money out. And I, I am worried about that. I am concerned about that. I, I'm hoping, cause I know there, the whole reason why Bob Iger stayed on board was to sort of like kind of walk JPEG through this whole process, kind of like, um, be his mentor, so to speak, right. In this transition. So I hope, Iger is sort of teaching Bob, Hey, look, you know what? You got to put money in. You can't, you can't just take, take, take. You got to put money in too. I'm hoping that's the case. We'll see. It's, it's, it's really, like you said, it's really hard to determine because we're in a pandemic and a huge economic, you know, near depression. It's hard to tell, like, is this a necessary cut or not? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Now, um, kind of segueing off of the topic a little bit, but kind of staying on when you had mentioned in the very beginning, when you said that Disneyland, you know, can still have an effect on Walt Disney world and vice versa, that even though they're separate, they're still a unity of the same company. And I find that kind of interesting because there were some talks that, and this one caught me by surprise that possibly some of the divisions of the Walt Disney company that are based in the state of California could be moving to Lake Nona, Florida. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I know that they really didn't give too much uh, information on it, but do you think that would ever happen? And do you feel that it's necessary for Disney to do that? Do you feel that like Disney is like just at loss of what's going on in the state of California right now, that it's like in order to keep things moving, Florida is the best place to be? Yeah, I mean... I, I think that like, like, I don't think it's necessarily like they, they, they feel like Florida is the best place, but I think that they think Florida is a much better place to be. And I think that California is far too restrictive and, and far too, and this is not a new thing with California. I mean, just to be fair to Newsom, I know California has been bleeding out for a long time. Hollywood's been moving out of California for years. I remember in 2006, Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he ran for governor, his big platform was bringing Hollywood back into the state because it was even before 2006, it was bleeding out, you know? So it's been an ongoing thing. It's just, it's very expensive here. The taxes are crazy. There's so many regulations. A lot of these companies want to move out. And especially now, Disney with this whole drama with Governor Newsom and the parks and everything. Yeah, I definitely see it happening. They want to get the hell out of here, you know, because if you think about it, it's like, <laughs> it's the, everything they, they want to do is constantly being met with resistance. You know, a year and a half ago, it was the city of Anaheim. They wouldn't let them do anything in terms of the gateway project or anything like that. Remember all that whole drama? Now, now it's Newsom. Now it's the governor of California holding things back, right? Even in the mid 90s, Disney had issues with the city and local governments in regards to building Westcott. It's just fight after fight after fight after well, if fight. You even, well, if you even think about it, even the very beginning during Walt's era when he first built Disneyland, when they started building the hotels and the motels and the restaurants, it was breaking his magic and he could not stand it. Right. So even though that Walt, uh, that Disneyland is Walt's original park, he still loved it. That was his baby. 
but that's what allowed him to even make Walt Disney World because he wanted something bigger and better. And it's like, so the issues with the state of California was there even during Walt's time. You know, right. it's like. There, yeah, exactly. There's a lot of issues with the state. And, I, you know, Hollywood, not just Disney, is moving out of the state. A lot of filming now. Disney does a lot of its filming like in Georgia, yeah. you know, for like their Disney Channel stuff. And I know a lot of their Marvel stuff. A lot of that's filmed in Georgia. It's not filmed in California, you know. Um, you know, Disney's stuck in California, though. I mean, for the most part, uh, they can't move Disneyland. You know, it's a, it's really the birthplace of the theme park for for them. It's a historical thing. You know, they can't move Disneyland to Texas or Florida. They can't really do much with even the studio. Again, that's a historical site, so to speak, for the company. But whatever they can move, they will move. Absolutely. Until the situation in California gets better. Now, when it does get better, do you think they'll move it back? Or do you think they'll just keep those divisions there and then just continue on? whatever's in California just stays. Uh, they might move it back just because I feel like it's more convenient to be in California for them because the headquarters of the company is in California. Um, I've heard rumors. And again, these are rumors that Lucasfilm is moving here. Um, well, they're already in California, but they're moving to, to like the Burbank area to be oh, closer okay. to, to the studio. I've heard rumors of that happening. Um, so I can definitely see if the situation got better that but there would be an yeah, I mean, if it's if it's a hostile environment where they're fighting the governor they're fighting the anaheim mayor they're fighting the city council they're fighting this they're fighting that yeah it's better than to be in florida <laughs> why why deal with any of it you know yeah i i hear you i definitely hear you so um yeah so yeah i definitely agree with you on that notion um I mean, there you go i see you you're back Okay. I apologize, folks. For some reason, this one is kind of, I'm telling you, it's JPEG. He's, he's, he's cutting into the, to the system here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're going to talk about me. You know what? I'll cut your, I'll cut your Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, it's really nothing against him. I just think that certain people have their, their high points, their low points, right. their strengths, their weaknesses. And right. I just personally think that Chapek, I feel, is not good for working the parks. I think that he would have a bigger strength somewhere else. Yeah, and here's the thing, too. And I'm going to play devil, devil's advocate here a little bit with Chapek. We're also assuming, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, too, but we're assuming it's Chapek. Remember, we, we have a new... And again, it might not be, I don't know, but we have a new parks, resorts, consumer products head, right? With Diamaro. Now we all like Diamaro. He's a nice guy. He's fun. He's charismatic. He's good looking, but we don't know the guy for all we know. He's the one making the cuts. It, all I'm saying is that we just don't well, know. No, you know, what's actually funny. This was actually in my head too, because Damaro is now head of parks, as you said, and I'm thinking everyone's taking pictures of him. He's walking around the parks, which is great. Right, you know, right. Michael yeah. Eisner used to go into the parks. He used to wear his moss ears, you know, walk around, right. be with the crowd, you know, so that's great. But it also does make me think, well, while you're walking around the parks, that's great. But yeah, is it really, could he also have some involvement in what's being done in the parks because obviously he's running the parks so it's like right exactly and and i think that as fans and we all we all kind of fall into this and myself included we all fall into this where we want to believe the one person we like they're they're kind of responsible for all the good but then the the, the person we don't like they're kind of in charge of all the bad so i i kind of like to sometimes i step away from it and go well maybe it's not what we think it might be tomorrow it might be you never know and you know what it probably isn't it, it probably is tape because like you said he has a history of it but i'm just saying you never know you know it yeah. could be yep so we'll just have to wait and find out so I think we'll end this topic uh, on a high note that I still gave Chapek some positive insight so he doesn't crash our uh, conversation again. <laughs> <laughs> so we will end this one here and we have one last segment, folks, so please stick around because this one's a doozy.
(laughs) (laughs) And remember, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, stay Disney. See you later.